On today's episode of Body Banging, I have a guest who is a non-DRP shop, and he came up with a great idea to do videos for his guests to show them the difference between a proper and an improper repair. And he talks a little bit about how he is a non-DRP shop and how that came about with some tips for you if you're thinking about it. Or if you're thinking about doing some really cool videos, I've got some ideas on how you can push those out to your people to help educate them because isn't that one of our big jobs now? It's not just fixing cars and fixing them right and procuring the proper parts and all of that fun stuff. It's education. So stay tuned and listen to today's episode of Body Bangin'. Welcome to Body Bangin', your podcast for all things body. Auto body, that is. And now, introducing Body Bangin's host, Mickey Woods of Mickey Woods Marketing. Mickey is a former Auto Collision Center owner and is now a marketing and business development expert to shops across the globe. Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Body Bangin Podcast. On today's episode, we have Frank Renato out of Louisiana. Hi, Frank. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. I am happy to have Frank. And we actually met through LinkedIn. So we are going to kind of chit chat with Frank today, who's an owner of a shop. He's got Frank's Accurate Body Shop, uh, which I love. It's not inaccurate. He is very accurate. <laughs> Uh, Frank, did you purchase the shop and name it after yourself? Sort of. It was owned by someone else and it was originally called Accurate Body Company. And oh. when I purchased it, I just put Frank's in front of it. I like it. There we go. That works. So Frank, um, I guess real quick, Frank's been in the industry for pretty much his whole life. He grew up in the industry and has owned his shop for over 30 years. Is that is that about right? Yep. Since 1990. Wow. Awesome. So he may know a couple of things about shop ownership and we're going to pick his brain today. And I actually found Frank through some of his LinkedIn posts where he was sharing stuff he was doing at his shop. And I was like, this is a guy that we want to talk to. He's doing a lot of things outside the box and maybe the traditional shops are doing, but I think more of the direction that the industry is going. So real quick, Frank, on average, like, what are you doing for sales a month at your shop? Uh, or we're averaging about two thirty a month. Okay. All right. Cool. And do you have any DRPs there? No, nope, no DRPs. And what about certifications? Do you have any certifications? Nine, I think, currently. Okay. All right. A lot of the assured performance stuff. Yeah. Subaru, Honda, Tesla, Porsche. We're actually onboarding with Lucid right mm. now. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so now where does most of your work come from then? Do you have local dealerships that are sending work? Not really. Uh, Slidell is kind of a smaller market. We're about 30 minutes outside of New Orleans. Um, okay. So there's not a, a lot of large dealerships by us. Most of our work comes through word of mouth from customers, referrals. Google reviews is a big uh, driver of work for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We use a, That's one of the things we do is in when... Customers come to us for an estimate or dropping their car for repairs. You know, we try to find out how did you find out about us? How did yeah. what was your deciding factor on you picking us? And mm -hmm. a lot of that is our Google reviews. That's amazing. You shops out there need to listen to this because I feel like I <laughs> preach it all the time. Is the reviews. Reviews are so powerful when people are trying yes. to make a decision. And having organic reviews that your actual customers are leaving is so powerful. And the fact that you're actually asking the question is what's really impressive because yeah. most shops, if you ask them, they assume they know where their customers are coming from. But do you really? Right. Unless you actually ask yeah. them. You're up. You're right. Yeah. And then you as a marketing person, you know, if if you know where they're coming from, you know where to market at. That's right. Exactly. You know whether you're spending your money in the right places or not. So one thing that Frank did that I found online that he had posted on LinkedIn, and I just saw it like last week, I think it was. So Frank posted a video of, which is appropriate, accurate, and an inaccurate <laughs> repair on a Tesla. <laughs> And yeah. uh, he did. So how often are you doing these videos, do you think? If something comes in, it really kind of sparks. Hey, we need to 
educate people about this. You know, yeah. we've done probably three or four of them that were kind of ugly like that one. Um, yeah. And we, we kind of do some other stuff a little bit more educational information also. I made one in particular on radiator and condenser, you know, showing we actually measured the number of cooling tubes, the number of cooling fins, and with dial indicators and, and video that to show that these aftermarket parts are not always equal to the original part. Wow, that's really cool. And then how are you getting those videos out to people? Social media, Facebook a lot, um, mm-hmm. some on LinkedIn, um, and we actually post some of them on our website. Oh, okay, cool. I should have looked at your website. Shame on me. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go look at it. Um, well, so I saw the video and it really reminded me, it took me back to when I was doing marketing for Valley Motor Center, where that was like my full-time job was just doing marketing for that facility. And I proposed before the owner died, I had proposed that we get a big screen TV in the waiting area and that we start doing some videos and educational videos and maybe like meet the staff kind of videos because people are sitting and waiting, depending on how busy the shop is, you know, they're waiting 10 minutes, 15 minutes. What are they doing? They're probably on their phone. Well, what's something else they could do? If you had a really cool video playing, this could be a great way to get in front of them. So when I saw your video, I was like, oh, this would be the perfect thing (laughs) for a waiting area. (laughs) And I think I even posted that, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah. So what do you uh, think? I need to do that. We have two TVs (laughs) in our uh, waiting area. Oh, do you? On news and stuff. And the other one, I have intentions of doing that. And unfortunately, I've never done it. I'm finding nowadays we see far fewer customers in the shop. We get a lot of, especially with Teslas, Porsches, Mm -hmm. we get cars from another state sometime and we'll have probably no contact physically with the customer until they pick it up or sometimes they just get towed back to them. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah, that's definitely a different situation, which is nice then because you have social media. So you're able to put some posts out there and you could even for shops that are interested in doing something like this. And I'm going to show the video. So if you're listening or watching the podcast, you can hear the video or you can watch it. Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Renato. I own and operate Frank's Sacred Body Shop. I want to make this video today as a little uh, educational video to uh, we have two Teslas behind me. One, we were in the process of replacing a new quarter panel on, and this vehicle came in damaged. Somebody's previously replaced the quarter panel on, and I want to show you the difference between quality repairs and poor quality repairs. I'm going to come take the camera and show you some stuff. All right, this vehicle, we changed the quarter, and it's ready to be sent to paint. Uh, As you can see, the the joints where it seemed that Emory placed it and I'm gonna go on the inside and kind of point out some things along here is where we've uh, welded it here the required rivets and as you can see kind of back up a little bit the inside of that is all painted so it looks original so we're gonna move to this vehicle Someone has replaced this quarter panel. I don't really know who or any history behind it, but it's a new panel, but it's also full of body filler. Get in a little close so you can see the crack, how thick the body filler is. Not sure if you can see textures, not really pretty. The joints I just mentioned over there, you can see it almost looks like a five-year-old has done this seam sealer and this is more of the factory of what it should look like another good thing if you're interested in doing videos like this that if for shops that have email lists some shops are doing email blasts like quarterly email blasts that was one thing that i did at valley motor center that i do for some of my other shops where every quarter as the seasons change it's kind of like hey these are the things to check your vehicle for. Here are some local events that are happening in your area and then have a cool video that you... So something like that. So the video, Frank shows him with two Teslas behind him and one came in 
And it was another shop that had repaired it. And then he shows basically, well, you have it like filleted open. So it's easy to see. And then he shows right next to it, another Tesla that they, that Frank and his team repaired at his shop and shows the difference of like what it's supposed to look like the proper way to repair it versus the way that this other shop repaired it. And nobody would know. That's the the craziest part is if you don't know what you're looking for, the average person would never know the difference, right? Right. And I think think that's the reason for the video, right? Yep. And a lot of that stuff was hidden behind panels that when the car is fully together, you can't see it. Exactly. Yeah. So he had the panels off and went even into the trunk and showed parts of it that, again, you would never see if you didn't take apart the vehicle. So even another shop wouldn't know the extent of the ill repair if you wouldn't have actually opened it up. So what made you think to do such a thing? Well, it came in wrecked in the rear and that Mm -hmm. was the area of the damage. And we could see by the exterior of the quarter panel, it it had been worked on and it didn't look great. But as we took it apart, it revealed more and more stuff. So this wreck now, so the quarter panel in question on that car was replaced. And then it was, I don't know, at the same time it was damaged or, or repaired again after that, but it had mm-hmm. filler all on it, a large amount of filler, which was too much. Yes. So I don't know if that was all one operation or two separate things, but it, uh, it's made it now that that quarter panel, if it was original, it may have been able to be repaired, but now it needs to be replaced from all the ill repairs previously. Right. Hey, would you like to increase the number of cars in your drive? Well, look no further. The Mickey Woods marketing team provides collision center specific marketing. We use proven techniques to not only increase your sales, but put money in your pocket. Visit us at collisioncentermarketing.com or you can find my personal contact information in the show notes. And let's get your 2022 off to a body banging start. So what what did you end up doing with that vehicle when it came to you guys? So it came in, we disassembled it and submitted everything to the insurance company. And it's actually still pending. It's mm. a borderline total loss. So it's it's yeah. still up in the air what, what they're going to do with it. Yeah. That, and you guys will see the video. It's a mess. It's a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Do you do you know what shop did it? Not that you're no, going to say it not. here, but because sometimes you know we get these vehicles in, we're like, who did this? And you would you genuinely yes. want to know, like, who let this car leave like this? Who's putting out work like this? Yeah, it's so the quarter panel has been replaced. So only a certified shop can buy the quarter panel. Mm-hmm. Good so. Point. I don't know. We haven't gotten much information out of the vehicle. And I don't know if he's the original owner, if he bought Mm. it used or all all the particulars on that. But there could be different scenarios of how that happened. Right. So basically when it came in and you saw that it was a hot mess, you were like, oh, I got to I got to show people this. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We've we've done that several times with cars that come in with stuff is just one. It's just horrible work. And then some of it's safety related issues. Yeah, you, know, it, you get into structural stuff. We had not this car, but another car, a similar situation, a quarter panel had been replaced on it. You look inside of it, it was welds that were very poorly done mm. holes that they had drilled to put welds and did not put welds. And it's just like, wow, there's no telling what would happen if they get hit again in that same spot. Cause yeah. obviously it's not going to do what it's designed to do. Right, right. So is that kind of what spurred you to start doing the videos initially? Yeah, just seeing what's there and just trying to educate the consumers on you really need to do your homework on who you choose to hand your keys over to and and how it can affect you and your family if you're ever involved in a subsequent accident. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you really have nobody has any clue how that car is going to react. Right. Well, and I think that's the one of the hardest parts about our industry is so much of it at this point where we sit now is education. I feel like there's so much of of educating the consumer, the customer, the guest on on all areas. I mean, we're educating them on insurance. We're educating them on a proper repair. We're educating them on parts. I mean, it's interesting that it all kind of lands on our shoulders and 
I think what you did with the videos and how you're trying to assist in all of that is really admirable. When I saw it, I was like, thank, thank you for doing something like this. I I wish more people would because it didn't, I'm sure it didn't take you a whole lot, real long time to shoot the video. No, not really. I'll pr- practice a couple of times so I don't stumble and look like an idiot. But <laughs> <laughs> after that, you know, a couple of minutes and then post it wherever you want to post it. It really doesn't take a lot of time. Right. And I know that we had talked previously about customer service just being a number one. And I feel like every shop says that like, oh yeah, that's our biggest thing is customer service. And you know, that's just, if you asked anybody, how important is customer service to you? Like they're all going to say, oh, it's number one, but is it really, you know, (laughs) is it really though? So what do you feel like you're, you guys are doing uh, to provide maybe extraordinary customer service compared to some others? So communication is one huge aspect of that. You know, we get tons of compliments on when we get reviews and it's always mentioned about how they were kept informed all Mm. through the process. And, you know, I, I stress to my people and try to instill them being proactive about updating customers rather than being reactive when customers are calling us looking for information. Yes. And, you know, everyone expects quality work, but um, Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of family in our business and our daughter-in-law has come to work with us in the last couple of years. And she's done a lot of neat little things that I didn't really think of. Uh, One of the things is just putting a personalized thank you card in the car with a handwritten note on it. I love that. It's it's very inexpensive. We get tons of feedback on it and just things like that, you know. Just providing them, keeping them informed, educating them, and providing quality work. Yeah. Um, So question for you. There are a lot of shops that I see like almost every day and other shops dropping another insurance company, it feels like. So it seems like more are going the way of not being no DRP centered. How are you handling the billing of all of that? Are you, if you don't mind talking a little bit about that, because that seems to be where a lot of shops are a little bit concerned, like it and that plus, you know, if they're a DRP, then they don't, you don't have to wait for a reinspector to come out, you know, just things just go so much more quickly. So there's all these concerns about these things. What would you, what would you say? Would you have, do you have any advice for somebody that's thinking about it? So it does slow things down because you're waiting for approvals, depending on the company, how they handle things. Some of them are very slow and some of them are reasonably quick. Um, You know, we fix the car according to the service manual and we charge for non-included operations. And Mm -hmm. there's typically a a separation in what our bill is and what they want to pay. And sometimes we can come to agreement. Um, Sometimes we can't. You know, we, our, our goal is not to charge customers, but right. that does happen where the customer winds up having to pay a gap at some times. Mm-hmm. And do you just kind of go over all of that up front then? Yeah. You know, we can speak to each customer more specific about whatever yeah. company's paying the bill and right. what their, how cooperative or uncooperative they're going to be. Um, yeah. You know, there's even a couple of companies we I've taken a stance this year to not process their claims. They're mm. that, that difficult. And yeah, a lot of people go elsewhere because of it, but right. you know, these particular companies, there's so much administrative work on our side. It, yeah. It's just not worth it to me. Yeah. I've heard of that happening quite a bit too. It's interesting. The landscape of, just in the last six months to a year of shops kind of just having like the enough is enough kind of thing. Like that we've done this long enough. Is this really what's in our benefit to continue doing this this way? And that's kind of why I wanted to pick your brain a little bit more on this because there's so many shops kind of pulling the trigger on, like you were just saying, just not taking certain insurance company claims, just not. We just, sorry, we don't. Or just coming off the program, something as simple as that. And But then I still see shops signing up on programs. So I mean, I'm, everybody's all over the place, but this just seems to be, it's a little scary because it's more unknown. And although yeah. people are doing it, when when you're the business owner and you've got to pay everybody, <laughs> there's a different pressure of making sure that you're still getting enough coming in. So um, yeah. 
I appreciate you sharing and being honest about what that's looked like for you. Because I know there's a lot of people listening that are contemplating if they haven't already. Well, like I said earlier, I believe it's the right path for me, but it's definitely not the easy path. Yeah. We get steered against a lot very heavily. Uh, One particular company even sends a letter out to every customer that wants to come to us. Wow. And yet they still come. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you know, I I feel we're especially if other shops in our market, we are so different and probably so foreign to them of how we do things from how we bill to mm-hmm. how I pay my employees. You know, I've we were a commission flat rate mm-hmm. probably 10 years ago, I switched over to hourly. Mm-hmm. And you know, I've even I've even tried to think out of the box with hiring people and and keeping people. I even uh, have a few times done a, a one day, one or two day interview. Like I'd say, look, you come here for the day. We'll kind of bounce you around to a few different areas and you can see a little bit about us. We can see a little bit about you. And then the next day I'll let the employees say yes or no. Mm, you know, that's the times cool. that I've, I've done that, I feel like the employees accepted that person instantly because it was their decision not me sticking yeah. somebody out in the middle of that you know yeah. so just little things like that trying to build a different culture mm-hmm. trying to involve them uh and get buy-in you know get their yeah. opinion just think out the box and try some different stuff yeah if you guys have questions for frank frank would you be open to them messaging you or emailing you if they have questions about maybe how you're doing your videos or anything you got going on in your shop Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put Frank's information in the description. And if you see me on LinkedIn, I'll probably tag him. You can go follow his page and check out stuff he's doing over there. But anyway, Frank, thanks again for coming on. And I hope everybody enjoyed today's episode of the Body Banging Podcast. And I'll see you next time. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have some incredible topics and guests coming your way you will not want to miss. If you are watching on YouTube and don't want to miss the latest and greatest, you'll want to hit the bell after subscribing so you will get a pop-up each time a video podcast goes live. To our devoted fans, would you mind paying it forward and sharing this little gem with someone else you think may benefit from it? Much love from all of us here at Body Bangin', all things Autobody.